So, what's up, y'all? I decided to do a video on uh, a question I, I got a couple times. I've been meaning to do this video for a while, actually, but I never, like, did it. But anyway, uh, it's about should you lease a car in Hawaii or should you buy a car once you get to Hawaii? I mean, there's so many different options. You can ship your own car from the mainland to Hawaii or you can just finance a car. So, I mean... Uh, I'm going to talk about what I believe is the best option. Uh, everybody's situation is different. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, a lot of different things may tailor to you. But for me, it's one thing that fits more than all of the options. And if I'm moving from the mainland to Hawaii, I hands down, knowing what I know now, I would definitely just lease a car when I uh, get to Hawaii. Simply because of the mileage. Most leases are around, well, starting out at 12,000 miles a year, and some even go from like 12. I know you can buy more miles, like 12 to 15, maybe even up to 18. I'll say if you commute end to end of the island, you still probably wouldn't reach uh, 12,000 miles. Well, you probably would because it's kind of far, but nobody commutes that far. So, um, yeah, in the end of the island will probably take you like two or three hours, to be honest, because traffic is so bad. But you would never reach 12,000 miles in a year in Hawaii unless, unless you drove like Uber. By the time I was there, I was there for two years and like some change. Uh, the most I drove in a year, I believe, was like 9,000 something, like 9.5, nine, five, nine six, something like that. But, and, I, and I live close to work, but still, you still would never drive that far. Uh, in Hawaii, well, that distance over the amount of time. So also another reason I say I would lease over basically uh, buying or doing anything else is uh, most people that come to Hawaii don't really stay that long. So unless you have plans on staying, uh, I guess, longer than like five or six years, uh, I would say don't do it because after five or six years, you could probably pay for a car. But if you're staying for like two years, three years, somewhere in that range, I would just say lease a car because you would get a pretty new car. You will also wouldn't have to worry about like uh, it breaking down on you. It's covered under warranty and you never would go over the, the mileage a year. So yeah, I would just say leasing to me makes uh, the most sense just because of those reasons. So unless you have a very expensive car that you're financing, uh, already back in the mainland and you want to bring to Hawaii and pay I guess anywhere from twelve to twenty two hundred dollars to ship your car you know and that's each way uh, I would say in that case it may be worth it because you already have your car and you're close depending on how much equity you have dumped into the value of your car it might just you might just come out better spending the extra money and trying to find a like the cheapest person, the cheapest carrier to ship your car. But if not, save that extra money because you round trip you're looking at maybe four thousand for a two to four thousand dollars depending on what type of car you have, depending on the weight of your car. So if you got an SUV or you know you can have a Jeep that's lifted or a truck, you know, something that's a lot heavier, you are gonna pay a lot more money just to have that car uh shipped. So I would say definitely just save that money and uh Either sell your car if you already own it in the mainland and just buy a new car, like a cash car, which is another option. Buying a cash car when you get there, just I would say uh, just get you like a hoopty and ride around in the hoopty until you know it's time for you to leave or until you're ready to leave the island. Uh, but I would say in longevity, that was the only way I would say uh, finance a car. And also when financing a car in Hawaii, there can be a lot of strings attached. So I had a lot of friends that uh, bought cars, well, finance cars when they got to Hawaii, and uh, they actually wanted to leave the island, but the banks in Hawaii, if it's a Hawaiian-based bank, they won't actually allow you to ship that car to the mainland. So yeah, at that point, you'll just be stuck and have to sell your car, which you would probably lose out money on selling it because, yeah, it's just hard to sell a car that's financed because you don't have the title in hand, so you have to tell the person the situation and yes it's just a lot of strings attached i would just say save yourself the the frustration uh buy a cash car or lease a car because at least on your lease you can terminate your lease early when you're financing you can turn you can finance and you're financing early but 
you're going to have to shell out all the cash that you owe on the car up front. And a lot of people aren't able to do that. So, yeah, look into leasing. So, to put it in perspective, I would say leasing would be my first option, followed by buying a cash car, followed by shipping a car, and then followed by financing a car. And the only reason financing is last is because you don't have that freedom of it. If you do need to move or do want to move, you can't take your car with you. You have to go to the bank, ask permission. And if they tell you no, then no means no. I mean, you can't do it. So, yeah, that's just a lot. It's a lot of red tape involved, and nobody likes red tape. So, save yourself that extra money uh, by, by either leasing your car or just selling your car that you own in the mainland and then buying another car in Hawaii. And if you buy a car in Hawaii and you like it, you, then you can just ship it back. So it's not like you're spending round trip money. You know, you're only paying for one way, which is from Hawaii back to the mainland because you purchased the car when you got to Hawaii. If you still have any more questions, reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, subscribe if you already haven't. Like, comment. So until next time, until my next video, peace.